the Morning School of Light. We are in chapter 9 of Job. If you want Bible studies, let me know. Let's hop right to this. Then Job replied, Indeed, I know that this is true, but how can a mortal be righteous before God? The one wished to dispute with him, he could not answer him one time out of a thousand. His wisdom is profound. His power is vast. Who has resisted him and come out unscathed? He moves mountains without their knowing it and overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth from its place and makes its pillars tremble. He speaks to the sun and it does not shine. He seals off the light of the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. He is the maker of the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the south. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. When he passes me, I cannot see him. When he goes by, I cannot correction, perceive him. If he snatches away, who can stop him? Who can say to him, what are you doing? God does not restrain his anger. Even the cohorts of Rahab cowered at his feet. How then can I dispute with him? How can I find words to argue with him? Though I were innocent, I could not answer him. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. Even if I summoned him and he responded, I do not believe he would give me a hearing. He would crush me with the storm and multiply my wounds for no reason. He would not let me regain my breath, but would overwhelm me with misery. If it is a matter of strength, he is mighty. And if it is a matter of justice, who will summon him? Even if I were innocent, my mouth would condemn me. If I were blameless, it would pronounce me guilty. Although I am blameless, I have no concern for myself. I despise my own life. It is all the same. That is why I say he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. When a scourge brings sudden death, he mocks the despair of the innocent. When a land falls into the hands of the wicked, he blindfolds its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? My days are swifter than a runner. They fly away without a glimpse of joy. They skim past like boats of papyrus, like eagles swooping down on the prey. If I say I will forget my complaint, I will change my expression and smile. I still dread all my sufferings, for I know you will not hold me innocent. Since I am already found guilty, why should I struggle in vain? Even if I washed myself with soap and my hands with washing soda, you would plunge me into a slime pit so that even my clothes would detest me. He is not a man like me that I might answer him, that we might confront each other in court. If only there were someone to arbitrate between us, to lay his hand upon us both, someone to remove God's rod from me so that his terror would frighten me no more. Then I would speak up without fear and fear of him, but as it now stands with me, I cannot. That last part there, if there was only someone to arbitrate between us, to lay his hand upon us both. That part right there, when I was reading it, Jesus came to mind. So, he is that arbitrator. Um, and Job is right. You know, how can we say, hey, God, you did this? Or, uh, like you would tell your neighbor, hey, you, uh, uh, your truck hit my mailbox. Uh, I appreciate if you repair it. You know, God is... Is, is not like the man that you can talk to like that. Um, because he is the authority. Well, there is no even authority there. Um, he, there is no even balance. So, he's saying what I feel. Um, is there's such a difference between God and man. And if there was only an arbiter, someone who could lay their hands on them both, understand this one and understand that one. And that is, there is that person. His name is Jesus, right? So I'm super busy this morning. I would like to get into a little bit more. I have to get uh, ready. 
However, if you want Bible studies, let me know. We have them. Um, Doctrinally Sound, come in the mail, and as soon as you complete one, we send out the next one in the series free to you. God bless. Just let me know if you want them.